and a very warm welcome to Hungary. We're in Europe for round four of Euro Formula Open at the Hungara Ring. It's race two of three this weekend and after the action from race one yesterday, the Euro Formula stage is set for another excellent race this morning up in the commentary box. My name is Harry Benjamin alongside me, Elliot Wood. And yesterday, Elliot, we had a new race winner on debut in the form of the 23-year-old racing driver from Turkey, swapping the eSports world for the real racing world. Cem Bolok Bassi taking the win in spectacular style. I spoke to him yesterday, a little bit of luck played its part, but he had to manage a lot of that race to finish it in the lead, and he did so. And uh, he starts from sixth today, because if you win yesterday's race one, you start from sixth, but what a result for Chen Bolabassi and the Van Amersfoort racing team. He goes from sixth today. Yeah, simply an incredible result for him, given how few laps he set in free practice and qualifying. Didn't really know how to take these tires a full race distance, and somehow he did it, and he did it better than anyone else. Uh, we're looking at Cameron Das about to come out of the pits. He was the driver who was leading the race prior to Bollock Bassi getting passed. And it was a very unfortunate incident for Das in which one of his front brakes failed. Uh, you know, he tried pumping the pedal, seeing if it would come back before it had at turn four. And then at turn five, it totally failed. Sent him through the gravel and he had to retire. As did, uh, unfortunately, affected Jack Crawford as well early on. He was yesterday's pole sitter. He is the American in the Red Bull livery car. He started on pole, a little bit of a slow getaway, which saw him go uh, three wide into turn one with Cameron Das and Louis Foster, you can see there, just coming out of the pit lane. And unfortunately, Foster and Crawford got involved in a little bit of a tangle, which spun Foster round and gave Crawford some front wing damage, which he had to go into the pit lane to fix. That meant they did get it back out, but he was tumbling down the order and ended up finishing in last position, all but one because Cameron Das retired. So Jack Crawford, unfortunately, started on pole, finished last in 12th position, which is where he goes from today. But the top six from yesterday's race result, that is reversed, and that gives us the grid for today. And it will be Nazim Asman, the Malaysian racing driver, who goes from pole position ahead of Casper Stevenson, the highest-placed rookie, and Josh Mason will start this race from third as the cars have made their way out the pit lane now and will uh, go round to the grid where they will start this race from. But uh, yesterday as well, we also had a, a new driver debut and finish on the podium in the form of Joshua Dirksen, who came home in third. A really strong result for the Paraguayan racing driver, making his debut with the DriveX racing team in place of Enzo Truly this weekend. Great result for Joshua Mason, uh, from Joshua Dirksen, I should say, just ahead of Josh Mason, who finished fourth. Um, Josh Mason getting the uh, most amount of positions gained, which gave him a couple of extra points, which will come in handy come the end of the season. Every point matters in this championship battle. It is a, uh, a fair old season. We've had Portimao in round one. Then we went to Paul Ricard, Spa Francochamp, where Louis Foster reigned supreme last turn out. Then we come to hung the Hungaring for round four. Imola is round five. The Red Bull ring in Austria will be round six in September. Then we head to Monza in Italy at the Temple of Speed before the end of September, before the final in Barcelona, Spain where we hope the title fight will go all the way to the very end. And I think it will. Cameron Das certainly leading the way, but not scoring any points yesterday has really allowed the others to uh, claw back some points on him. Yeah, Louis Foster, you know, he span around at the start, but he was able to get his way back up the order at a track that is very, very difficult to overtake on and pick up some very important points in a you know, very intense title fight between these two drivers and Jack Crawford. He'll be starting at the very back along with Cameron Das. Uh, after he also broke his front wing in race one. It was a bit of a frantic race yesterday, helped out by a few incidents because they do say, and we've said it all weekend long, that the Hungara ring is very much like Monaco, but without the walls being so close because overtaking is so difficult here. But yesterday, they proved in Euro Formula Open that it wasn't impossible, but it was difficult. And it's all about hooking up the, especially that middle sector, tight and twisty notes, 4.3 kilometers, 14 turns around here. So uh, it's very important to try and uh, keep that momentum it's quite difficult to follow in the dirty air. Vivian Kasey, yesterday, the uh, Hungarian racing driver racing on home turf, saying it was very difficult to follow in the dirty air of the cars in front. So uh, it's important to try and get away from pole position, which Nazim Asman will be hoping he does superbly and hoping he gets into turn one much cleaner than yesterday's pole, so to Jack Crawford. 
Yeah, you know, the start line is where most of the action goes, and we're actually seeing some of the drivers, including Asman, uh, you know, just spinning the wheels at the moment, checking the temperature of the track surface as well, getting as much data as they can before this race gets underway, uh, because it's very different weather conditions to what they were racing in yesterday afternoon. It was incredibly hot yesterday. Now the sun is out, but not too much. Obviously, some of the drivers do have umbrellas, including Josh Mason lining up in third place with the, uh, I think that's a Michelin umbrella. So, you know, they make they make Wellington boots, they make tires, they make umbrellas, they can do everything uh, with this GT Sport package. Fourth place, Joshua Dirksen. You know, uh, I thought the Turkish comments would blow up the whole uh, comment section of the stream yesterday, but the Paraguay fans as well, everywhere. You know, lots of people have really got behind this young racer, and I think they're very excited to see how well he does today. Certainly, and Rafael Villa Gomez, the, uh, the Mexican racing driver who missed Spa Frank for sure. He's going from fifth. Great return to the championship for him, coming home second yesterday. Couldn't quite match, though, his rookie teammate, Chen Bollock Bassi, but still very strong and happy with that podium position, which puts him in a solid position going from fifth today, just in front of the yesterday's race winner, Chen Bollock Bassi, who uh, was really taking it out of his tyres during practice, but a lot to ask yesterday, inheriting the lead after Cameron Das's brakes failed to bring it home. Very impressive stuff from the young Turk. Louis Foster as well showed good pace, was able to claw his way back through the field after a spin in turn one, getting in the zone under the umbrella. Visor down, he's ready to go racing. He'll be going just in front of Philippe Caminiars and all the uh, Crypto Tower racing team sort of finishing sixth, seventh and eighth yesterday. Lizzie Masman benefiting from that the most which uh, catapults him up to pole. His teammates just missing out on that reverse grid slot. Zenek Chovanek, the Venezuelan-born Czech, going from ninth position. In that uh, bold Turkish, uh, bold Turkish? Bold turquoise <laughs> livery <laughs> just in front of Enzo Schianti, the American. He said once again, he's here to learn, and with every race, he gets more and more data to learn from, going from the top 10 this time round, hoping he can improve on his positioning. He goes from home hero in 11th, Vivian Kasei, who just said struggling to follow in the dirty air of the cars in front of her. The Audi-backed racing driver being supported by her boyfriend, David Schumacher, this weekend. And uh, per, not last, but just one before last, J Jack Crawford says he, he can do something from 12th place. Pat on the helmet. He's ready to go. And it will be Cameron Das, our current leader in the championship, going from last position. They had to rebuild that entire chassis uh, during Friday's session after Cameron Das uh, said that uh, the car was damaged. Let's take a look at how it unfolded yesterday. Jack Crawford on the right-hand side of your screen from pole. Bit of a slow start, had to fend off from Cameron Das. That allowed Louis Foster to sort of claw around into turn one to go around the outside. They all jostled for position, but then it was three wide into turn one, and three does not go into one. As demonstrated there, Louis Foster spun around. That gave Jack Crawford from wing damage. Cameron Das, though, seemingly able to then create a gap to take the lead going into turn one as they jostle for position. Rafael Villa Gomez managed to get out there as well, and that was the brake failure which saw Cameron Das off into the gravel and out of this race. And then, unfortunately, for home hero Vivian Cassay, just suffering from following the car in front of her into a spin. But then, after taking the lead, it was Jen Bollett-Bassi who held on to it to take the win for race one on debut and the first win for the Van Amersfoort Racing Team in Euro Formula Open this season. Ahead of Rafael Villa Gomez and Josh Dirksen on debut two. There for your top three from yesterday's race. Well, the stage is set on the right hand side of your screen is pole sitter Nazim Azman. Next to him is Casper Stevenson, the rookie for Van Amersfoort Racing, just in front of Josh Mason on road two, and Joshua Dirksen behind him. Then it's Rafael Villa Gomez, yesterday's podium finisher, just in front of yesterday's winner, Kem Bollock Bassi. Louis Foster goes from seventh ahead of his teammate, Philip Kaminiars, from eighth on row four. Zenek Chovanek and Enzo Schianti take up row five. Then in 11th, it's Vivian Kasei ahead of Jack Crawford in the team motor park Red Bull liveried car.
last but not least, your championship leader, Cameron Das, after retiring from yesterday's race due to brake failure, will be hoping to find his way through the field. It can be done here. Hungary, a tough place to overtake, but it can be done as we get underway for this formation lap. There will be another race later this afternoon in which the fastest lap times from this race dictate the grid for that. So the fastest lap from this race will secure you pole. So we will keep you abreast of that action as well because strategy can certainly play its part if unfortunately a driver gets muddled up potentially in an incident they can try and set the fastest lap time. So even if they finish down the order, they could well set themselves up for the pole for race three to try and get a little bit of damage limitation. It's not as hot as it was yesterday. It's still sunny, but there's a bit more of a breeze in the air. Cameron Das saying that it was some of the hottest conditions he had to race in from uh, Friday's session. I think they'll be grateful that they can have a little bit of uh, cooler running this time around. 4.3 kilometers, 2.7 miles this track, 20 kilometers north of Budapest. Opened in 1986, which is when it, when it held its first Grand Prix. 14 turns, eight right, six left. We're in Mogyord, which ranks as the third best tourist destination after the Danube Bend and Lake Balaton here in Budapest. As we come through now, the uh, penultimate corner. Kasper Stevenson coming through the final corner. Nazim Asman might have a little bit of a weight on his hands in pole position. He'll be hoping to back up the pack though. There he is. The uh, Malaysian racing driver will try and get his first win of the season. So far, second is his best finishing result this year as he lines up in his slot quickly followed by Casper Stevenson and Josh Mason who is pointing right towards the right hand side of this track I think we know where he's going to be going he wants that inside line potentially we'll see how it all unfolds turn one is a key overtaking zone the green flag will fly at the back we are ready to go racing it is all eyes to the lights and foot to the floor as we go racing in Hungary potentially a slow start there from Nazim Asman that has allowed second place man Kasper Stevenson to get right up alongside him defending from Joshua Dirksen who slots into third just ahead of Josh Mason they're all trying to get the inside line but I think Kasper Stevenson is going to make the best of it he goes down into the breaking zone takes the lead into turn one but he's going to have to hold on from it Nazim Asman is not giving this one up without a, without a fight neither is Joshua Dirksen who slots into third though no, Asman trying to go round the outside to retake the lead Kasper Stevenson wise to it holds on to the lead going through turn three now into the tricky turn four they jostle for position looks like Jack Crawford trying to make up positions in the background but Kasper Stevenson leads ahead of Nazim Asman and Joshua Dirksen Asman slow exit out of that corner really backing up the field there allowing Kasper Stevenson to run away with it yeah, brilliant start. I actually think this start might come under investigation because I saw a few drivers slightly rolling off the line. Louis Foster, Josh Mason make contact. Mason's on the grass. Doesn't get hit by any of the other drivers, but he's lost several places there. Crawford now trying to go down the inside of one of the motor park drivers. Stevenson several seconds ahead. We've now got Van Amersport car, I think, in third place. So Rafael Villagomez in the mid-pack. That must be Bollock Bassi, who has risen up in third. Stevenson in the lead, two seconds ahead of Asman. Bollock Bassi, another half second behind. Josh Mason going alongside with, I think that may be Vivian Gastei now trying to make a move down the inside. Not enough room for both cars, but he does Ooh. get through. <laughs> Very close. Lock, quick lock up of the brakes, and they're going to go side by side again into the penultimate corner. Mason retains a position. Third ahead, you've got Villa Gomez and Crawford fighting. Chovanek is right behind them. Crossing the line, Stevenson has broken away massively. 2.3 seconds. Mason battling there with Philip Kaminiars. Very intense battle there. Unfortunately, Mason losing positions left, right, and center after a bit of contact. Louis Foster's made up some great ground. He's currently in fourth. We get a move there. That's the uh, number eight, Rafael Villagomez, defending from Jack Crawford, who's trying to work his way back up the field, having started last. Yesterday's pole sitter going to go around the outside. Difficult to get the move done there. Well, Villagomez giving the room just about. Great racing there between Crawford and Villagomez. Crawford now through into sixth place ahead of Villa Gomez. Casper Stevenson leads with the fastest lap too. Then it's Asman Bollock. Bassi Foster is in fourth. Joshua Dexon in fifth after a great start. It's fallen down the order slightly. Then Crawford and Villa Gomez. 
Mason there was running in the top four. A little bit of contact saw him fall down to eighth place. He's lost five positions ahead of Kaminiars. Chomanek rounds out the top ten. Kasey has maintained 11th ahead of Schionti. Cameron Das still in last place in 13th. Yeah, he's dropped eight seconds from the rest of the field. So he didn't go into the pits. He did stay out on track, but then probably is something wrong with that car. If he is dropping that much pace to everyone. He has picked up his pace now, but seeing him drop. First sector, Louis Foster's fastest. Now in the second sector is Jack Crawford. He's only two positions behind. Foster is ahead of Dirksen now as well. So it's all change at front, but Stevenson 2.4 seconds ahead. Casper Stevenson with a great start there for the rookie driver. Managed to get down alongside Asman, the pulse it's on the inside line. And then it, Asman just seemed to have a really slow exit from uh, turn four, I think it was, on the first lap, which just really backed up the pack. And that's what allowed Stevenson to look at the visible gap there. That is 2.3 seconds between the Brit and the Malaysian racer. Then comes Bollock Bassi, yesterday's race winner, trying to maintain a podium placing ahead of Louis Foster. And Rafael Villa Gomez has come into the pit lane, so he may potentially have damage. He's parked up. There's no one there ready to change a wing or anything. But that may be his race over. Cameron Das sets the fastest lap time though, so he's clearly got up to pace. So I'd like to see what happens to Das at the start. This is the replay. Asman, our pole sitter, immediately cutting across to try and cover from Casper Stevenson. Mason does the same thing for the battle for third, but Dirksen wise too. And then look at the two on the inside. That is Stevenson and Dirksen who try and do the last of the late break. There's a little bit of a lock up there from Dirksen. Asman falls to the outside line. Let's have a look in the background for Das as well. Did we see anything happen to him? He's already managed to get in front of Enzo Schianti at this stage. So something's happened to Das, and that is the move for the lead. Casper Stevenson down the inside into turn three. They're managing to get the lead. Dirksen slots into third, just behind Asman. And this is where I think we saw a slow exit getaway for Asman. There was a little bit of contact there for Mason and one of the VAR cars. At this stage, Das still at the back of the pack, but ahead of Schianti. Yeah, and Villa Gomez is now being wheeled into the garage, it looks like. The team have, are working on the car, they put it on the jacks. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not on the ground, so I, I, I pretty much think that is race over for the Mexican, which is great shame, he had a great start to this race. As completely third left as Stevenson, 2.48 seconds ahead of Asman. Another second behind is Bollock Bassi. Team manages the cars 21 and 66, go to race control. That is Josh Mason and now, I, I'm not sure if Mason jumped the start, but I think Asman as well might have potentially just rolled forward very, very slightly, stopped the car when the lights went, he got going. Vela Gomez out of his car now, so uh, yeah, day over for the Mexican. Well, that's the two teammates as well, actually. Mason is an edge of it, who've both been called. So the double R racing team boss has uh, potentially, that was the two cars that came together in the uh, chicane. We'll uh, keep you abreast of all of that. The start is under investigation. We've lost Rafael Villa Gomez from this race. He is now out of his car. Unfortunately, the, uh, the podium finisher from yesterday's race now finds himself out of race two. Last of the runners and out. Das now, last of the current runners with the fastest lap though. So Das now chasing down Schionti. He's right on the back of him. Seven tenths of a second between 11th and 12th right now. Still, the gap at the top is 2.4. We're watching Jack Crawford chase down fifth place man, Joshua Dirksen there. Two tenths of a second between them. There's a big long train here. They're all stuck up behind Nazim Asman. So really, this is the battle for second. Asman, then Bollock Bassi, then here comes Louis Foster looking at the back of Bollock Bassi. Then comes Dirksen in fifth, Crawford in sixth. So it's a long train here for the battle for second place. Who is going to dare and bravely make a move here? We're now looking at the number 74. That is Jen Bollock Bassi coming through and leading this train of cars as they all rally style their way through the fast chicane of six and seven. It looks like a. Dirksen has got a little bit closer to Louis Foster there. Meanwhile, Casper Stevenson just managing this gap, keeping it around 2.7 seconds. And we're getting lap times deleted as well for track limits once again. That is for Casper Stevenson and Chembolic Massey. So first and third place being caught out there. They are going faster than the cars behind them, though. I think Casper Stevenson does have the pace to at least stay out in front, potentially even stretch this lead further, because clearly Asman is holding up a, a train of cars here. Cameron Das still 17 seconds behind. He will be closing in back on Sconti, though. We need to find out what happened to him on that first lap. Our top two currently have never won a race in Euro Formula Open this year. 
They'll be hoping to try and get that off their back. Stevenson leads from Asman Bollock. Bassi, yesterday's race winner on debut, won his first race. Here in race one, Louis Foster in fourth, dominated in Spa, trying to hunt down the Turkish racing driver, but also he's got to look at his mirrors as well, because fellow newbie Joshua Dirksen is looming in fifth place ahead of Jack Crawford, who's made up a stonking few positions from 12th on the grid. Six places gained. Yeah, and Crawford and Chovanec have just had their previous laps uh, deleted when it comes to lap times. Turn 11, which is that fast right-hander that we saw them going through a few moments ago at the start of the, the final sector of the lap. Across the line, five laps complete, 2.79 seconds to Stevenson now, so he's extended that by a very, very small margin on that lap, but it is a personal best for him as well. Bollock Bassi third, 4.3 seconds behind, Foster behind. Crawford and Sick is actually the fastest driver through these first corners. And it does look like he's already got a run on Dirksen. He's really closed up to the back of him. We saw Foster having a little look as well at Bassi going into turn one, but he's just a bit far back at the moment. Crawford, though, looks ever so close to the back of Dirksen. Will he be able to try and set himself up for a move later on in this lap? Difficult approaching this middle sector now, which is tight and twisty. It's just going to be about how close can he stay to the back of Joshua Dirksen in that Drivex car. And then the Red Bull liveried car of Crawford following behind will try and set it up so we can get him into the final sector, into one of the heavy braking zones, potentially of 12. And if not, it'll have to be into turn one to get a good run onto the main straight. Dirksen falling back a bit from Foster. He's focusing on trying to defend for his life from Crawford, who came into this championship having missed the first two rounds because he was too young to race, came for race three in Portugal and dominated. And then came to Paul Ricard, he dominated again. He missed Spa Francochamps for his other racing commitments, came back, stuck it on pole, didn't work out for him in the race. And I think actually he's now unfortunately fallen back in that final sector from Dirksen. As we get confirmation for car number 66, that is Zenek Chovanek for Double R Racing. Jump the start, a five-second time penalty has been applied. Chovanek currently down in ninth position. That five seconds will be added to his time at the end of the race, which will see him fall to the very back of this pack. That's still about seven seconds off the back of Schianti. So there is something going on with Cameron Das right now. He was seven tenths at one point. Yeah, two laps to go, but he has just set the fastest lap again. A one minute 35.038, so that's six tenths faster than anyone else. Potentially, he's out of the points. He knows he can get a point for fastest lap, so he's just backing off, getting the tyres into the right window, going for fastest lap, backing off, doing that again. And obviously, the, the grid of this race is set. No, the grid of the next race is set by the fastest lap, so he will qualify in the front if he keeps on this. However, he could score you know, the same amount of points if he did get into the top ten. That's a risky move, because you think Crawford has worked his way up to six. Das could have done the same. Theoretically, I know it's difficult to overtake round here as Josh Mason gets confirmation of the jump start as well. So the double R racing boys both getting a bit too eager on the throttle at the start of this race, unfortunately for them. That is seventh place currently for Joshua uh, for Josh Mason. But that will be applied at the end of his lap. So interesting strategic move from Das though, if that is what is happening there. Two Americans currently in the back of his pack, but Das, yeah. About six seconds off the back of Schianti and Das should be and is a front running car here but right now that belongs to Casper Stevenson the most position gained at the moment goes to Jack Crawford six places gained from 12th to 6th Dirksen's lost the place as has Asman that gap has now enlarged to 3.1 seconds Foster has got a bit closer to the back of Chen Bollock Bassi now and I can see why Das would try and just settle for fast slaps to secure in pole position for race three because you can get right up to the back of someone here but then it's the overtaking that proves difficult around here. The Hungara ring like Monaco but without the walls overtaking is possible but difficult to follow in the dirty air of the car in front of you. So Das wise to it because this battle has been raging on for quite some time now. It's really the, uh, the battle for third now. Asman's managed to get away from Bolifassi. 2.3 seconds the gap there for the final podium place. And then comes Foster, Dirksen and Crawford. Makes it a further five seconds back. He would drop to the back of this field as well once his five-second time penalty is applied because there are no pit stops in Euro Formula Open. Well, no mandatory pit stops if you're in the pits. Unfortunately, it's probably due to an incident or damage. 
and that kind of puts you out of the race, unfortunately, unless you can get back into it through a safety car. Well, seven laps gone. Stevenson leads the way, three seconds. I saw him yesterday being uh, sat down outside his uh, garage, talking to his team personnel and engineers, just trying to find out ways he can go quicker. Had a really great run yesterday as well. Just uh, missing out on the podium placings, but strong fifth result for Casper Stevenson, who felt an improved mark of pace for him after Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium. And was just going over the data, finding out ways he can improve his technique, and that seems to be paying off at the moment. Eight laps in, Stevenson leads the way. And Cameron Das is still going even faster. One minute, 34.746 last time by. Actually still records Rafael Vela Gomez as having the fastest final sector, even though he is obviously not in this race anymore. But Das, you know, it's a risk, but he's making it count. However, with the lower fuel loads and the power of the slipstream up front, which Das does not have, uh, potentially we could see one of the drivers actually taking it back from him. He is currently around seven tenths ahead of what the likes of Nazem Asman and Jack Crawford are doing. But Jack Crawford is also getting repeated warnings of track limit violations. So that may cost him not only the fastest lap, but potentially could give him a penalty as well. It also looks like he's closed up to the back of Schianti a little bit as well. It was seven seconds a couple of laps ago, and that's 2.3. So maybe that's wise to the slipstream effect. I'm wanting to just get a little bit closer to the Schianti in front of him and uh, try and go for another fastest stat, which he does currently hold. This battle for third, though, rages on in race two of Euro Formula Open 2021. It's the 13th running of the Euro Formula Open Championship. Born in 2001 through various different iterations, this is now Euro Formula Open with a brand new chassis debuting here at the Hungara Ring this time last year. The Dallara F320 with a redesigned monocoque, slightly decreased weight as well, and upgraded aerodynamics, helping to improve overtaking and performance of the car overall and has treated us to some excellent races so far in 2021. Yeah, halfway through this race, Casper Stevenson now has a 3.1 second lead. Now, he ended the first lap with 2.2 seconds, so he's extended that by 0.9 in nine laps, essentially. So he's around one tenth a second faster per lap than Asman, who is constantly having to look in his mirror. Car 21's now had a lap time to lead to the track limits. That is Josh Mason in seventh place. He's dropped back five seconds with Crawford. Crawford still trailing Dirksen, but can't really get close enough to think about making a pass. Car 66 as well. Chovanec deleted track limits at turn five. So the start of this race it was turn 11, which is pretty much the fastest corner of this lap. And now it's turn five, which is after the similarly fast turn four, it's the uh, right hander going uphill where drivers are getting caught out now. So potentially that's to do with the tires, a bit of scrape, you're sliding more, hence you're riding out over those curves on the exit of the corner. The battle for third does indeed though rage on. You can see briefly there the split times between Chef Bolabassi and Louis Foster, who has been gaining and gaining and gaining, is only a couple thousand slower than Bolabassi in front of him. And you get the impression that Foster might have a bit more outright pace, but it's just finding it difficult to close up to the back of Bolabassi and try and make a move. Asman solidifying second place at the moment, continuing his consistent run. Podiums in every single race in Belgium at the last round. Finished sixth in yesterday's race. That gave him pole this morning. But uh, two consecutive slow getaways, actually, for uh, the, pole, the pole men. Jack Crawford from yesterday. They look like they got off the line initially well, and then it's the second phase of the start, which just seems to see them both bogged down, allowing, crucially, whoever's in second place to, to get alongside and hide that inside line, which, as we know, is one of the main overtaking zones of the slot, of, of the race, of the track. Yeah, the, the clutch is quite tricky on this guy. You can preload it without it overheating too much, uh, but, you know, you have to be very, very, very... Uh, ca not casual. Uh, you know, smooth. Smooth, that's the word. <laughs> very, very smooth with it, because otherwise it can go very badly wrong for you. And also it can mean you can jump the start if you do it entirely wrong. Casper Stevenson now 2.6 seconds ahead, so he has lost half a second to Nazem Asman, who set his best and best on that last lap. So the, the battle for victory isn't over here. I think Asman could be going back into it. You know, he's opened up four seconds over Bollock Bassi. Bollock Bassi looked like he could have kept the pace early on, but 
you know, this second half of this race is probably going to have a totally different story to the first half. We know things can change very quickly in Euro Formula Open. All of these drivers fighting their way up the ranks to reach the pinnacle of motorsport, finding their place here in Euro Formula Open as we get a lovely replay. Great shot through here of Nazim Asman. He actually changed up his livery last time out to include these uh, yellow trims. He was orange before that. Completely threw me in my, uh, in my chart. I had to do a quick highlight job on that. Thanks, Nazim. But uh, they changed that, and it's 2.9 seconds now in the gap. But I get the impression though Stevenson is just managing that fairly well. And Chen Bollock Bassi able to hold off Foster for the meantime. Crawford now. Perhaps he dropped back a little bit just to get out of the dirty air, save his tyres a bit more. Has come back on to Dirksen in front of him. Joshua Dirksen, the, the Paraguayan racing driver, from 17 years old, making his debut this weekend. A karting champion. An F4 graduate as well in the United Arab Emirates, vice champion of that in 2019, made the step up to Italian Formula 4 in 2021 with well-known outfit Luca Motorsport. As Das has now gotten through on Schianti further back and in doing so, set the fastest lap time. So Das has managed to get 11th place. So maybe he's fancies a couple of points after all. Uh, does does Cameron Das, who is uh, now not last of the runners. Points go down all the way to 10th place. It's 25 for the win. 18 for second and 15 for third, all the way down to one point for 10th place. And you do get a couple of points for points uh, uh, for most places gained as well. 10 points in the team's championship as well, if you win the race. And these are all spec cars as well, so every car is the same. When it comes down to the chassis, two different engine manufacturers, Spies and HWA, battling it out between these 13 cars on the grid. Same tyres, same fuel supplier. So it really comes down to your driver integration with the team and the car and those small tweaks you can make. Louis Foster there on entry, getting a, a little bit of a snap of oversteer. They're having to correct it, comes through, falls back ever so slightly from Bollock Bassi for the Crypto Tower racing team currently occupying fourth in that blue and black car makes his way through a couple of gaps now appearing this is really the tightest fight we've got at the moment between the battle for third place and the battle for fifth place it's sort of split between these four drivers two by two Bollock, Bassi and Foster, and then a gap to Dirksen and Crawford, but they all come through your screens there. Dirksen keeping Foster within view. Having to look in his mirrors as well. I think Jack Crawford will be getting sick and tired of looking at the back of all three of these cars. He'll, as we see a lock-up, though, for Dirksen. Tyres starting to screech for help. That's allowed Crawford to really get onto the back of the Paraguayan racing driver. Could we see a nice move here lined up for the end of the main straight? Dirksen really has put himself in a spot of bother here with that lockup. A little bit of a flat spot there as well. We'll get a replay of it into the braking zone for 12. Slight lockup gets it turned in, runs wide though. That has allowed Crawford to really come up to the back of him and all over the back onto the main straight. Will Crawford try and move to the inside line to have a look? Can't quite get close enough on this occasion. Makes it through turn one. But Crawford isn't actually going for position here. He has just been handed a five second time penalty for repeated track limits violations. Thinks about going down the inside of turn two. The car looks very loose. Dirksen's tires as well. You can see a bit of graining. The core kind of like loops going around the tire where the rubber is getting a little too hot. Crawford would have to get past and make a five second gap in the next five laps. But, you know, Louis Foster up ahead and that gap between those three drivers hasn't really changed much. I can't see that happening. Dirksen now has had his latest lap time to lead to track limits at turn 11. It's fair, we did see him going off unintentionally there, so I doubt that's going to be too impactful for the stewards room. Meanwhile, up front, Casper Stevenson responded to Asman's uh, upping of his pace. 2.9 seconds between those two. Bollock Bassi, seven seconds behind. I think the battle between third to sixth place now is, you know, anyone could be in those positions come the end of this race. Yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on there, Elliot. And uh, Crawford desperately trying to get through because at the moment he would lose sixth place with that penalty applied. 
although actually, yes, it only just, if he can just get a, a couple of tenths down the road from Mason, he'll be able to hold on to six, which you can see why he's trying to get a little bit of a hurry on there, because Mason is still within three seconds of Jack Crawford. So Mason could be in line here to inherit sixth place. But with Crawford and Mason, both have five second penalties. So I think they're pretty much locked in position. They've got a good gap to flip Kaminiar's name. Chovanek could lose ninth place to Vivian Castell because he also has a five second penalty. Very well remembered there, Elliot. So yeah, it could all be all evens out actually. And someone might well have told him that because it didn't look like he got a hurry on. Then it's calmed down a little bit. Crawford, the uh, biggest position gainer so far with six. But out front, Casper Stevenson still managing that gap. Just under three seconds from Nazim Asman. Chen Bollet Bassi occupying the final podium position at the moment. Be a great run if he could finish there. A first and third in his first two races of Euro Formula Open. Not too shabby from the 23-year-old Turkish eSports star. Huge fan base, huge following. And we welcome him to Euro Formula Open and all of his fans that have come with him as well. It's an absolute pleasure to have you watching on the streams, Euro Formula Open on YouTube. Make sure you follow on social media as well to keep up to date with everything Euro Formula Open. As we uh, end lap 14 at the start of lap 15, Casper Stevenson comes round the final corner to cross the line to start 15 laps. So far, untroubled for the rookie driver as well in his first year of Euro Formula Open. Started with a roof over his head in 2019, doing some Ginetta Junior racing, made the step up to British F4 in 2020, came third in that championship with two wins to his name and 14 podiums. Now finds himself in Euro Formula Open after making another step up the ladder. And his season has been gathering pace with every single race. 3.2 seconds the gap between Stevenson and Asman Bolabassi in third. Louis Foster is fourth. Joshua Dirksen rounds out the top five. We're getting a little bit of a gap now split between this battle for third because Crawford is nearly a second back from Dirksen in sixth. Then comes Josh Mason. Philip Kiminiars is eighth. Chovanek in ninth. Vivian Kasey on home turf. Currently in 10th position and in the points. Cameron Das has worked his way up to 11th in a, a curious, we think, strategy call to just try and focus on getting the fastest lap of this race. He's currently in 11th. If he secures that fastest lap come the end of this race, he will secure himself pole position for race three, which gets going later this afternoon. Enzo Schionti, the last of the runners, the American rookie. 16-year-old down in 12th position. 6.5 seconds off of Das. We've lost Rafael Villagomez, the Mexican racing driver for Van Amersfoort Racing, the 19-year-old from Guanajuato in Mexico. Also dovetailing an FIA Formula 3 championship there. Scored a podium yesterday in race one. Finds himself out for unknown reasons as of yet, but we'll do a bit of digging in between sessions and bring you that for race three which uh, gets going 2.35 local time. So make sure you come back for that as well for the final race here at the Hungara Ring, which roughly marks the halfway point of this season. Imola, Red Bull Ring, Monza and Barcelona still to come in what is a mammoth calendar. Brilliant racing tracks, historic, legendary circuits we get to visit. Thanks to Euro Formula Open. And you could just see these battles calming down slightly. I think it's just proving ever so slightly difficult to uh, follow the cars in front with the dirty air coming over the rear diffuser, just making it difficult. So each driver falling back slightly, just trying to take the pressure off managing their tyres with 16 laps gone. And some drivers aren't quite managing the tyres, but Nazem Asman's actually going faster than he has at any point in this race. There is a 3.5 second gap between himself and Casper Stevenson in first place, but he's, you know, he hasn't given up on this victory at all. Asman would be wanting this as well. It would be his first win. It would also be Casper Stevenson's first win in 2021. Casper Stevenson rounds the final corner. He hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Doesn't go too wide, keeping it on the black stuff. There's the lap board. P1, 
but the Zim Asman is looming in the background. That luminous yellow and black car is not going to give up without a fight. As we start the final lap, there are your top two. 3.1 seconds the gap. Stevenson and Asman. Bollock Bassi currently occupying the podium places as well in third. Then comes Louis Foster, Joshua Dirksen. Then Jack Crawford, Josh Mason, Philippe Kaminiaz is eighth ahead of Chovanec and Vivian Kasey, who might be able to jump up the order a little bit as well once penalties are applied for jump starts and track limits. Another warning flag given to Josh Mason for track limits as well. So the race directors and race control watching them like a hawk. Cameron Das still holds the fastest lap in 11th and Enzo Schionti rounds out the back of this field. But it is not too long to go for Casper Stevenson, who could be on charge to get his first win in Euro Formula Open. The rookie driver in his rookie season coming into the penultimate corner now. It's been a good run for Van Amersfoort Racing, who picked up the win yesterday. Their first win with Chen Bollard Bassi. And they're going to be tasting the champagne and the podium success once again as Casper Stevenson crosses the line to win race two in Euro Formula Open. He takes his first win in the championship ahead of Nazim Asman, who comes home in second, having started on pole. Jen Bollock Bassi with a strong ride to third place, having scored a win in yesterday's round. He follows that up with another podium. Louis Foster comes home in fourth. Then it is Joshua Dirksen. Jack Crawford is able to get up to sixth place once penalties are applied. That promotes Josh Mason. Philippe Kaminiaz is eighth. Vivian Kasey gets promoted to ninth. The Hungarian home hero gets a couple of points on the board. The Audi back driver comes home in ninth position ahead of Cameron Das who I think did secure the fastest lap. We'll get confirmation of that. So he is on provisional pole for race three. Then comes Chovanec, who falls down the field after penalties are applied to him. And Enzo Schianti rounds out the 12 runners. We lost Rafael Villa-Gomez. But after that brilliant start, managing to get down the inside of Asman, Kasper Stevenson ran away with it. And he is your race two winner for Van Amersfoort Racing. The British driver who made the step up from Formula 4 machinery to Euro Formula 3 machinery. And proving he's been learning with every single race. He said after Belgium in Spa at the last round, he's really impressed by how much he can learn. And it's seen him take the race win. Confirmation that ahead of Nazim Asman and Chen Bollock Bassi is your final podium. Finisher, then Foster, Dirksen, Crawford, Mason gets seventh place. Kaminiaz, Kasey and Das rounds out the top ten. And he did secure the fastest lap camera, Das. So that does get him pole position for race three a little later this afternoon. Chovanec and Schianti, the last of the runners. We lost Rafael Villa-Gomez, who came into the pits early doors. What does that do for the championship? Well, Louis Foster has really been able to close in on Cameron Das. Three points now just between the top two. Then Nazim Asman in third. Kasper Stevenson with that beautiful one, uh, win. Sees him go up to fourth place in the championship ahead of Jack Crawford, who rounds out the top five. There is Kasper Stevenson, who's pulled into part Ferme. We'll put the wheel back, and I think he'll be very happy indeed with that run. We'll see a run over to the team, the engineers, the mechanics, everybody that is able to put that car on the grid. It's not just the driver, it's a team effort, and they've all won today. A brilliant result for Casper Stevenson and Van Amersfoort Racing. Taking their second win here in Hungary. Two from two for VAR. The Zim Asman, I think, will be gutted that he lost that one from pole but a very solid run to second consistency is key in these championships and once again proving he can get onto the podium Nazim Asman climbs out of his car gloves off comes home second place just ahead of Chen Bollock Bassi yesterday's race winner puts VAR on the podium once again to come home in third Louis Foster just missing out 
on the podium placings there, but I think he'll be pleased with that after having to cut through the field uh, after a spin in yesterday's race. Able to make his way back up and crucial points gained just ahead of Joshua Dirksen. But this is how your top three looked in slow mo. Chen Bolabassi making his way through the chicane. Picks up another podium in his debut weekend of Euro Formula Open, just behind Nazim Asman for Crypto Tower Racing, picking up yet another podium in his Euro Formula career, putting himself into the championship hunt. But no one could match Casper Stevenson. Started second, took the lead into turn one. Let's hear what he has to say. Casper Stevenson, first victory in the Euro Formula Open here at uh, Hungaroring. You must be very happy. Yeah, it's good. It made up for yesterday because we got a bit unlucky at the start yesterday. Um, and we had a bit of unlucky in qualifying, so it was a good race. And I just pulled away and managed the gap. And yeah, it's a bit hard towards the end, but managed to bring it home. And I need some water now. So. <laughs> It's been a season of uh, continuous progressing, yeah. so now it starts to work, huh? Yeah, I think I'm making big progress and so is the team. And um, it's good that we got three cars here. And um, yeah, it's good to have our victory, so, you know, changing the order a bit. Well done. Enjoy the moment. Thank you. Race two at the Hungara Ring looked a little like this. Nazim Asman started on pole, but a slightly poor getaway allowed Kasper Stevenson to get along alongside him, vigorously defending from Joshua Dirksen in the Drivex car, making his debut, but down the inside and through into the lead was Kasper Stevenson. Nazim Asman wasn't going to give up, though, without a fight as the rest of the runners made their way through cleanly, but then he was able to fall back. Kasper Stevenson able to get away a little bit of argy bargy further back. That was Josh Mason who made contact that forced him down the order Casper Stevenson able to pull away but this battle for fourth was not ending anytime soon between Chen Bolabassi, Louis Foster, Joshua Dirksen and Jack Crawford yesterday's pole sitter made up the most amount of positions in today's race from the back of the grid trying to find a way through finding it difficult though hard to follow here at the Hungara ring and that all allowed Casper Stevenson who just was able to manage the gap to second place man Nazim Asman to come home to Take the win for Casper Stevenson in race two here in Hungary. And they're celebrating with his teammates and members. Another win for Van Amersfoort Racing, just ahead of Nazim Azman in second and Chen Bolik Bassi, making it a double podium for VAR, who have had a stonking weekend so far as we see the drivers now in their driver's room getting ready to head out to the podium. A first win for Casper Stevenson. Who, uh, who said he's really encouraged by the big progress he's made since that first visit for pre-season testing. And made a point in that interview there, didn't he? That saying, you know, it's great to have his teammates back alongside and VAR running three cars this weekend. He feels that he benefits from that. Feels more like an Second army. Position. And clearly, Nazim it's paying off. Nazim with Chen Bolabassi, his other teammate, getting onto the podium. And it's Rafael Vena Gomez also making it on yesterday. But there is your third place man. The Turkish star comes home in third, just behind Nazim Azman from Malaysia. The 19 year old takes second place, but all the honours go to the British rookie, Kasper Stevenson, who takes the win for Van Amersfoort Racing. Congratulations, well done, gentlemen. Please raise your trophies for the official photographs. Congratulations once again to Casper Stevenson, who takes his first win here in Euro and Formula Open. Pole position later today for race three will go to Cameron Dast. <laughs> no champagne spraying there. They don't want to get their race suits wet. But we do it all over again a little later this afternoon. Cameron Dast will start from pole. Join us for race three, 2.35 local time. We'll see you then. <laughs>